All right, cool. Got you? All right, cool. We're doing something different here. Okay, I'm in my studio, but I'm recording a little bit differently. All right, so today's video, we're talking about things that you should avoid putting on your skin. So what I'm gonna give you in this video are ingredients that you should absolutely try to avoid. Okay, so when you're looking on a label for anything that goes on your skin, a lotion, a body wash, a shampoo, a shaving cream, anything like that, these are things that you're going to want to try to avoid. Good news is the FDA is cracking down on a lot of these things, so you're not seeing them as much, but please, by all means, pay very close attention to these ingredients because they're hidden very, very discreetly in a lot of very popular brands, which are gonna remain nameless, but either way. So without further ado, let's get into this. But first, please do hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications and never ever miss a beat, never miss one of our daily videos. So please hit that subscribe button. It does help us out a ton. Okay, first thing I wanna talk about going to be parabens. Now, I'm not gonna show the brand of this, but let me show you something really quick. If you look closely, let's see, wait for this to grab focus, you see something that says methyl paraben. Parabens are one of the most well-known bad things that you're gonna find in cosmetics, right? But what exactly is going on? What's it supposed to do? Well, parabens are designed to be sort of anti-mold or anti-fungal, so they go in there as a preservative. But you have to remember, anything you put on your skin is going to get absorbed into your skin, and it's still going to get into your bloodstream, and it still has to go through a process within the liver. So the liver still has to prioritize the metabolism of a potential toxin. Just because we're not ingesting it doesn't mean it's not getting inside our body. We tend to think that it just stops right there at the skin. It's very important to pay attention to this. So what exactly can a paraben do to you that's so bad? Well, the hard part is I have to be very careful talking about this because most of the studies with parabens are done in very high concentrations or they're done on animals, which means that we can't necessarily take it apples for apples. And that's just my research truth having to come out there. But I will honestly tell you from my recommendation, you should be a little bit cautious or a lot cautious. You see, there was a study that was published in the journal Toxicology that kind of freaked me out a little bit. It took a look at breast cancer cells and then it also took a look at non-transformed epithelial cells, so from the breast tissue. It's so basically cancer cells in the breast tissue or non-cancer cells in the breast tissue in this particular case. Well, they found that when they were given or exposed to paraben, it stimulated what is called ESR1, ESR2, and PGR in the cancer cells. This could mean that it's triggering more cancer growth. That scares me. Okay, now I know we can't say this for a given fact, but when you look at that, even in the test tube study, that's a little scary, but it does get a little bit worse. In the non-transformed epithelial cells, they noticed that there was a change, a potential mutation showing that it could be a carcinogen. It could actually be triggering new cancers. Again, we can't say it 100% just yet because it's not done in humans. We can't label it an official carcinogen, but still, that sketches me out a lot. Now, the other thing that you have to think about is why is a moisturizer typically going to be marketed? It's typically going to be marketed as like anti-aging or to make your skin smooth or skin soft, right? Well, what if I were to tell you that the parabens that are in a lot of moisturizers completely defeat that purpose? The Journal of Applied Toxicology published a study that looked specifically at methylparaben, and this methylparaben was shown to change some of the genetic structure. It basically made it so that it lowered gene expression of type 4 collagen. Type 4 collagen is what you would want to have supple, smooth, non-wrinkly skin. So at a genetic level, it is causing an effect. That seems a little bit scary to me. And again, it just puts it out there that why would you want to take something that's potentially toxic that long-term at a potentially genetic level is counteracting what you're trying to achieve in the first place. Anyhow, just avoid the parabens, avoid that stuff. That's going down the drain. Well, that'll kill the fishies, so we won't do that. Okay, next up is triclosan. Triclosan, triclosan, potato, potato. This is something that you're gonna see in hand sanitizers a lot. Why do I not have one to show you? Because at the time of filming, we're dealing with the pandemic, which means that there are not a lot of hand sanitizers around. But triclosan is something to be careful of. Now, here's the thing. Triclosan, the way that it works isn't by killing bacteria. It stops the reproduction of bacteria. And me having a little bit of a science brain here, that scares me because you're altering bacteria's life. You're not just killing it, which means that you could be stopping a lot of good bacteria from being able to reproduce. Think about it, that has to have an effect within your gut. I can't show you the honest truth that that's 100% the case, but come on, it's an antibacterial. It has to be doing something like that. Now, it has been banned in soaps, but you can still find it, unfortunately, a lot of times in uh, toothpastes, you can find it in sanitizers, you can find it in a lot of shaving creams, because think about it. Shaving creams are gonna put it in there because when you shave, 
you might nick yourself. So they have an antibacterial, which seems like they're doing a good service, but eh, maybe not. The other thing that's odd that it does is triclosan stops fatty acids from being able to bind to the bacteria. So normally bacteria would be able to eat short chain fatty acids, like in your cell, right? You have some, or in your gut, you have that happening. Well, if you didn't have that happening, then you can't fuel the bacteria, but that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about the toxicity of this stuff. There's a study that was published in the Science of Translational Medicine Journal. Took a look at two different groups. Okay, these were mice, but still interesting. Okay, what they did is they gave one group a diet that contained triclosan, and they gave another group uh, sort of a chemically induced protocol to instill inflammation in their gut. Basically, they chemically induced irritable bowel syndrome. Well, what they found is that the mice that consumed triclosan ended up having more issues more inflammation, more overall symptoms than the group that was actually given irritable bowel syndrome. That's pretty wild. So simply by eating triclosan, something that's supposed to be antibacterial that we would put on our skin, it caused a bigger issue. Now, again, you're not eating triclosan, but you're getting my point here. Lastly, when it comes to triclosan, we have to remember that it accumulates in the fat. I'm not just trying to scare you, but Things store in our fat, toxins store in our fat. So when we look at an antibacterial or an antibacterial reproductive, if we wanna call it that, and it stores in our fat, again, that sketches me out because then it's staying there for however long, right? We need to potentially get that out of our body and we don't really know how. You might not see it on the label as triclosan, you might see it as DP3000, or lastly, kind of a mouthful to say, you might see it as cloxophenolum. So just be on the lookout for all of these, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and let's move into the next one. I am gonna say something here really quick, just for those of you that are watching. Um, this video was sponsored by a company called Dr. Squatch. It doesn't mean that what I'm putting out there is not true information. I just wanted to be able to teach people what to avoid, what you should get. And these guys are just awesome. So I do recommend that you check them out. Like if I were to read you the ingredients right now, we've got olive oil, sustainable palm oil, coconut oil, shea butter, lye, and essential oils. And then we got, you got cedar, rosemary, sea salt, and clay. Okay, so these are really good, clean products that I personally recommend. Yes, this is a sponsored video and I appreciate the heck out of them for supporting this channel right now. But I do recommend that you check them out down below if you're looking for a clean alternative. You do not have to buy it at all. By all means, take the information that I'm giving you and talking about these other ingredients and you can utilize it at the grocery store when you're shopping for things, but I highly recommend that you check them out. And I will say they're a big supporter of this channel. So the best way that you can ever support my channel is to support the sponsors that work out for you because honestly, that's just how this channel stays afloat, how I pay the team, how I feed my family, and I just appreciate it. I will say the cool thing about them is they're just a lighthearted company. You've probably seen their funny commercials. They're just a good group of people. I highly recommend their soaps. They've got some other products. You know, so you can save some money as well if you use the link down below. Okay, so this next one I wanna talk about is one called hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is going to be in the products that you would usually see to get rid of blemishes or to get rid of dark spots. The scary thing is, and I know I'm using that word a lot, is that it alters the pigment. It actually changes the pigmentation. Now, there are some other studies that take it a little bit further and find that it could be altering things at a genetic level. So there was a study that was uh, done out of the Netherlands and they were demonstrating that hydroquinone could affect our DNA by making it so that cells don't undergo a, that state of apoptosis. You see, apoptosis is natural cell death. We have cells in our body that when it's time for them to die, it's time to die. It's just their natural selection time. Okay, they have a mutation, whatever. We don't want those mutated cells. Well, they should go through that natural death cycle. Well, it turns out that hydroquinone could be prohibiting that from happening, which means that you might have extra cells that are mutated that shouldn't be there hanging around. So be very, very careful when you're looking around at any cosmetics or anything like that. Hydroquinone, big hydroquinone. Okay, you ready for a mouthful on this one? Methyl isothiazolinone, also known as MIT. Now, where are you going to find this? Well, a lot of shower gels and things like that. Take a look. Boom, right there. What's odd about this one is yes, it's still kind of an antibacterial. Yes, that's kind of the intended purpose, shelf stability, things like that but it's more of a neurotoxin, a very powerful neurotoxin. You see, when you look at, once again, Petri dish studies, and I know that's a little sketchy, but still, you gotta pay attention. 10 minutes of exposure of MIT to brain cells causes some pretty serious neurological issues. Now in 2004, the European Science Committee deemed that you cannot use more than 100 parts per million of MIT in any kind of like skincare product or anything like that. The hard part is that 
In the United States, that's not the case. So you can have a little bit more than that. I'm not sure what the exact limit is. Now, I'm sure the FDA is working on this because it's obviously a little bit of back and forth because it's known to be a pretty dangerous chemical, but we have to take matters into our own hands and we have to make sure that we're educating ourselves. And I would not exactly want to be putting this on my skin or anyone in my family's skin. Okay, so now we're gonna move over a little bit. We're gonna talk about shaving creams and shaving gels and things like that. Okay, you a lot of times will see BHT. BHT is petroleum derived. Something to remember about anything petroleum. Okay, so petroleum jelly, like Vaseline, things like that. It is not metabolized by the human body. It is oil-based, okay? And you're also gonna see it as petrolatum. That's still petroleum, okay? So be very, very careful with that. In fact, I would recommend trying to avoid those kind of things whenever you can. But take a look at the label here. Let me make sure I can find it. Yeah, okay. See that BHT down there? Come on, focus. So the European Commission of Endocrine Function labeled this a category one priority, which means they found it to be pretty darn toxic. The reason they found it to be pretty darn toxic, hormone function, okay? so. We don't have concrete evidence that would be enough to say this is dangerous and it's going to alter your hormones, but we're getting recognized somewhere with that. Okay, so if it's affecting your hormones, probably because it's petroleum and it's just not being metabolized and it's throwing the body off, it's enough for me to not want to be putting it on my body. Now, normally, like I said, in a lot of these shaving creams and shaving gels, you'll see triclosan or some other kind of antibacterial, but you do have to be careful with the preservatives too, especially the petroleum stuff because it's trying to make it really smooth, but also act as a preservative. Some of the early evidence is starting to show that it may mimic estrogen within the body, which I want to say a lot of this stuff that I'm talking about, that's the big concern. They could be xenoestrogens, okay? They could be triggering estrogen production because they mimic estrogens. So that means the estrogen receptors see it as estrogen, and in men especially, that's going to cause potential water retention, it's gonna cause potential fat accumulation, it's gonna cause more uh, potential sex hormone binding globulin. I'm very careful to say potential with this stuff because a lot of it is still nebulous. Now again, a lot of the research in the world of BHT is done in mice that have four stomachs, right? So when you're measuring stuff in the four stomachs, it's not always equatable over to the human studies, which upsets a lot of people because they say, wait a minute, this is concrete stuff. We're just seeing it in a mouse, not in a human. But again, I wouldn't be referencing the good science if I didn't mention that. So these are the things that I really highly recommend that you avoid. When you're going into the grocery store, when you're going into a cosmetic store, be on the lookout for this stuff. And again, please do check out Dr. Squatch. They're funny, they're awesome, they're lighthearted, but most importantly, they're just good, clean products and they're supporting the heck out of this channel. So please check them out down below in the description and I will see you tomorrow.